In this lesson, we're going to introduce you to numerical analysis. Now, this is an incredibly powerful and widely used technique uh, for using computers to solve problems that you just can't solve by writing down equations, which actually turns out to be most problems. For a very long time, physics was in denial about this because we didn't have computers for most of our history. So we would try very hard to solve anything using equations, making approximations and whatever was needed. But nowadays we all have very powerful computers available and so it's now this is almost the first method you use. So how is numerical analysis different from what you've normally done? Well normally what you've done is Let's say you're trying to work out where some object's going to be at some point in the future. What you would do is you'd have an equation. You'd have an equation of position equals some function of time. For example, if it's motion in one, direct, one dimension with constant acceleration, that's so the x is going to be ut plus half a t squared. And so what you do if you want to know where the object's going to be in 15 seconds is you'd substitute 15 into the times here and here, and then you'd get the position. Now this is what's called an analytic or closed form solution. Because you can write down an equation that will tell you the position at any time. And it's not just for position, it could be um, temperature or voltage or anything like this. Whatever it is you want to know, you can solve full maths and get an equation that will tell you what it's going to be wherever and whenever you want. Sounds wonderful. And it is wonderful when you can do it. The trouble is, you can normally only come up with an analytic closed form solution for very simple, very approximate problems. For example, projectile motion, when you're firing an object. And if you ignore air resistance, you can come up with a closed form solution. By the time you put air resistance in, especially if you allow for the object spinning, if you allow for variation in pressure with altitude, if you allow for Coriolis force, it rapidly becomes not merely painful, but actually mathematically impossible to come up with a closed form solution. And that's where numerical analysis comes in. Perhaps the most famous example is the three body problem. Now, if you have one object moving through space, then you can work out where it's going to be at any given time very easily, because it's just going to go in a straight line at a uniform speed. And so you can just use position equals u times t only in a vector form to work out in 3D. Now, if you have two objects moving under their mutual gravity, perhaps in orbit around their common center of mass, or both flying through space, again, this is called the two-body problem because there are two bodies moving through space. And this was actually solved back in the 1600s by Isaac Newton. And you can calculate. It's not an easy calculation. It's something you'll do in second year physics. But it is possible, and things move in elliptical orbits around their common center of mass. So that's solvable. But what happens if you have three or four or five or six objects? Let's just start with three. Three objects with some starting position and starting velocity and starting masses, all pulling on each other by gravity or some other force like electromagnetism, can you actually write down a closed form equation for where they're going to be? And people, the top mathematicians and physicists in the world spent 200 years trying to work this out. And in the end, it turned out to be impossible. There is actually no, you can prove mathematically that there is no such thing as an equation that will predict the motion in this. There are special cases where you can do it, but in general, you cannot solve this thing at all. This is the famous three-body problem. Let me show you an example. So here I've got three objects moving under their own mutual gravity, and let's see what they do. Now, I defy any of you to try and work out an equation for one of those lines, like that green line or that purple line. The motion is really complicated. In fact, this is the origin of chaos theory, because the motion is usually chaotic, which is why you can't actually come up with a closed form analytic solution for it. So do you just give up? No. In these complicated situations where you add levels of complexity, you can solve it, but you have to solve it numerically. And that's what we'll talk about next.